What is going on, gum fighters? It's getting to be that time of year. Leaves are starting to change color. Soon, hopefully, blood will be in the air. Hunting season, right? There's a recast coming out on a Sunday. It's not taking the place of a new episode, but it's in addition to. Recorded last year, in 2021, but coming out again. Hopefully you enjoy it about hunting with ARs. Thanks for listening. Hello, and welcome back to Gunfighter Life, the podcast where we talk about gunfighting and defense and all other gun-related stuff the right way with God at the center from a Judeo-Christian worldview and real-world first-hand experience. I'll roll into a quick bio and then the topic. If you want to skip the bio, you can skip to about four minutes in. First, I am a Christian. I don't apologize for that. God is number one. I hope to honor that in everything that I do, this podcast being no different. I grew up hunting and shooting and fishing and even competition shooting at a very early age in the South. I joined the Marine Corps at 17, way back pre-9-11 days. I did a couple of combat tours in Iraq. After my combat tours, I was an urban warfare instructor, desert warfare instructor for the United States Marine Corps on the Mojave Viper. I also served in law enforcement, LAPD, both regular assignments and more specialized assignments. As well as serving in the United States Army, both full-time and part-time National Guard. I was a private contractor for a three-letter government agency I won't specify. FBI certified firearms instructor and RA certified, a couple of other, quite a few other certifications. Been a professional firearms instructor for a lot of years. I served as the commander of a tactical team in a metropolitan area where our primary job was to stop active shooters. I've been very blessed with a lot of talents. Been blessed to be a state rifle and a pistol champion a few times over one more shooting competitions than I can remember. Blessed be the Lord my rock who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. Enough about me. Let's get into today's topic, the AR for hunting. Now I don't know if this is true, but I've heard it said quite a bit that the AR is the most popular platform in America. And it's good for a lot of things. I would not say that it is optimal for hunting. I would not say that. I would definitely say not say that it's optimal for medium to large game hunting. That being said, I must concede that we have a lot of new shooters and a lot of people buying ARs and a lot of them hopefully want to get into hunting. And if that's the case, I would like to give you the most amount of leverage to use this platform in an effective and humane manner on medium to large game or any game. We'll talk about other game too, other quarry. I probably should have mentioned in the bio as it pertains to this episode, I kind of skipped over it and uh, been a professional big game hunter and guide. Hunted all over this beautiful country, everything from whitetail there on the east coast, mule there on the west coast and elk and deer and slayed all manner of beast, bear and wolf and even been a professional hunter of things like bison. Not many people today are blessed to say they've been a professional buffalo hunter. But I can say that. With that, let's get into talking about hunting with the AR. Now let's start small. We'll talk about varmints on up to deer and larger game. No matter what your quarry, no matter what your game is, no matter what the thing is you're doing with it, the AR, like anything else, ammo selection is important. No matter what kind of fancy AR you have, it's the bullet. That's the object that actually does the killing that goes in that living tissue. It's the bullet. Bullet selection is critical. Bullet selection is especially critical if you're going to do something like hunt a deer-sized animal with a 223. Let's start small, like we said. 
Prairie dog hunting can be quite a lot of fun. It can be quite a lot of fun with an AR. If you're doing a varmint hunting, use a varmint round, I would suggest. Using, you know, your 35 or 40-ish grain bullets that are meant to expand rapidly on things like prairie dogs and ground squirrels and whistle pigs. What I would consider, you know, semi-frangible rounds, thin-jacketed for rapid expansion. Varmint grenades are pretty awesome on small game like that or other similar rounds. Stepping up to things like coyote, you know, your 45-ish to 55-ish grain bullets. Nothing wrong with using something heavier if that's what you're already set up for. But coyotes, I would say the AR is a decent platform for hunting coyotes. And it's typical guys, which I would consider to be a 16-inch carbine, you know, with a red dot sight. Moving up to large to medium large game things like deer this is where bullet selection is super critical i would not say that the 556 223 round is optimal for hunting deer but i must concede that it's effective as many hunters do it realize that tactical applications and hunting are not the same thing One of the big advantages people tout about the AR, especially for like home defense, is that it fragments and doesn't penetrate walls and things well. And that's true. That's a good advantage. And your goal on a tactical application should not be to kill someone. It should be to stop them from their bad behavior and have them change their behavior. If they're trying to hurt you, change their behavior so they're no longer trying to hurt you. If you wound them and they go away or they continue to stop fighting and don't die, that's fine. If you wound a deer and it runs away, then you just kill the deer that you can't eat. And it may suffer a long time, which is immoral and foolish. They're not the same. So I would not recommend the same bullets. You want proper penetration. Penetration is key when it comes to medium to large game. I would suggest not full metal jacket, of course. A lot of times it's illegal and not effective for deer and maybe there's been a deer or two taken with it but that doesn't make it right i would say not a full metal jacket and not a hollow point if it's designed for tactical applications unless it's a hollow point designed for hunting with proper penetration in mind for the size game that you're hunting i would suggest my first choice would be a jacketed soft point round not a hollow point but just a soft lead point which gives a good balance in my opinion and my experience between penetration and expansion. It will expand some, but it will penetrate enough, hopefully. And you're going to want to, in my opinion, stick with the heavier bullets. I'm talking 60 and up grain, 62, 64, 70 ish something to 80 ish something grain bullets if your twist rate can handle it. And I would say that even with this in mind, I would think it ethical to stick to a broadside shot with a 223-556. A broadside shot, if you really know what you're doing, you know, a quartering away from your shot, if you can thread it between the rib cage and into the vitals. But if you know how to do that and know what I'm talking about, you probably already know that. But for the person getting into hunting, stick to a broadside shot, meaning the animal facing sideways to you. And a good shot placement you can look that up that's more a visual thing than an audio an audible thing but look up proper shot placement don't just shoot at the animal but again if you're going to hunt with the ar-15 in its most common caliber 223-556 ammo selection is key next let's talk about optics now a lot of A lot of AR-15s come with iron sights. Iron sights are great. Iron sights are great for learning marksmanship. And I would say iron sights are just fine for hunting if you're going to keep your shots into 100, 150 yards. Now, you may say, oh, you can shoot farther than that. And yes, you can. I was blessed to be an expert rifleman in the Marine Corps. I routinely hit man-sized targets at 500 yards with iron sights. Without a rest, without anything, with a beat-up old... M16A2 with iron sights. Yes, I could hit a man-sized target at 500 yards. But again, tactics and hunting 
or war fighting and hunting is not the same. Again, if I'm in a war and I'm shooting at a man-sized silhouette, if I hit that target and it stops doing the thing it's doing trying to kill me, that's a win for me. If I shoot a deer and hit it somewhere and it runs off and dies three weeks later of infection, that serves no point and is immoral and it doesn't help me eat. So whereas a shot somewhere on the torso in warfare is acceptable, the kill zone on a deer to drop it and recover it and consume its flesh to make me stronger is a far smaller target. For that reason, I would say limit your range if you're using iron sights to the range that you can hit into that small, you know, small pie plate size target. And very common today, and for good reason, are red dot sights. And I would say red dot sights, your range is the same. The red dot sight will give you the same range. It will just, it may, depending on the scenario, let you get a shot off faster. Sometimes you're not sitting in a deer stand with a nice rest and all the time in the world to shoot a deer. Sometimes you're walking through a draw or some fallen timber and a deer jumps up 20 yards in front of you and is going away from you and you need a shot quick. And for that... A red dot is great. So I would say red dot, same range as your iron sights, 100, 150 yards. Um, And uh, those are probably what's most commonly on an AR. Now, if you're talking about putting a a magnified magnified, uh, optic on there, specifically for hunting, they're kind of overlooked nowadays, but I would say look to your fixed power scopes. They're small, they're handy, they tend to be more robust than their variable power counterparts because they have less moving parts. They don't have all the parts that need to adjust magnification. A 2.5 fixed power or a 4 fixed or a 6 fixed are your most common, but any of those will do just fine and do superbly for hunting. That being said, your most common optic that you're probably going to find at Walmart or Big Five or, or somewhere like that with the most amount of options is probably going to be your 3 to 9. Your 3 to 9 is a deer hunting standard. It's been that way for a long time and it's it's fine. It does good at medium ranges, it does good at long ranges. May not be great for a jump shot shooting with both eyes open. But it's a good choice. Especially if you're hunting for something like a stand or something where a jump shot is probably not likely. So your 3 to 9 is fine. Whatever optic you get, I would suggest the 50 yard zero, but do what you want. 50 yards zero with an AR will generally get you dead on at 50. The bullet will rise a little bit high in relation to the sight, in relation to the zero. Between 100, 125, 175 yards, it will be dead on again generally between 200 and 250 yards, somewhere in there. Depending on a lot of factors, your load, your bullet weight, your velocity, your barrel length, your twist rate, all that stuff generally be dead on at those two ranges so anything you know between 50 and 250 yards generally you can point at the center of your acceptable kill zone and if you do your fundamentals right eat venison now let's talk about the platform itself we talked about the 223556 16 inch carbine that's probably your most common now a longer barrel is going to make it more effective it's going to give you more velocity So if you have a 20 inch or something like that, even better. Now, if you are going to pick a different caliber, which I would highly recommend if you can, if you decide hunting with an AR is your thing and you want to be more optimized for it. I know a lot of people are saying the AR-10. Yes, the AR-10 is a great platform. But if we're talking about a different platform, I would suggest just getting a bolt gun or something. If we're talking about the AR-15 for hunting, there's a few caliber choices I think are far better and totally acceptable and would turn the AR into a good, maybe not the best, but a good hunting rifle for medium to large game. My number one choice would be the 6.5 Grendel. Now the 6.5 Grendel is maybe an underappreciated cartridge. A lot of people are familiar with the 6.5 Creedmoor, and I know for the ballistics nerds this is not exactly correct, but let's consider the 6.5 Creedmoor a 308 neck down to 6.5 and I know a lot of people are saying no that's not right that'd be the 260 Remington yes but for argument's sake for simplicity to understand let's say the 6.5 Creedmoor is a 308 neck down to 6.5 caliber 
well, for the sake of argument, and this is not exactly true, but a similar thing is taking the AK round, the 762 by 39 and necking it down to 6.5, giving you the 6.5 Grendel. An amazingly efficient and effective round. To be fair, I've never owned a 6.5 Grendel, but just looking at the ballistics, it seems like a fine round and would be a fine round for medium to large game hunting. 6.5 Grendel, you get a great bullet selection. Nowadays in the 6.5, there's a lot of good bullet selection and a lot of good hunting bullet selection in the 6.5 caliber that comes along with the 6.5 Grendel as well. And it fits in an AR magazine, so you could get it, you could get a different upper and put it on your AR-15. You have an AR-15 and 6.5 Grendel. That would be my number one choice if I was going to hunt medium to large game with an AR-15. My second choice is not far behind, is the 6.8 SPC. Now the 6.8 SPC was one of those things that came about Every now and then there's a rumor that the U.S. military is going to get away from the 5.56 and get something with better ballistics, more effective on stopping power. And one of those rumors, as I understand it, verify the facts for yourself, but one of those sparked the 6.8 SPC. And 6.8 is just a metric designation, a metric name for, you know, the 27 caliber that you're probably familiar with in the 270 which is also a fine, 270 is also a fine deer cartridge. Nobody would argue with the 270's effectiveness. And the 6.8 SPC does not give you quite the velocity, but it does give you that good bullet selection and that good proven bullet size and caliber and weight for putting down medium to large gain. The 6.8 SPC would be another fine choice. You could sit there and argue all day about the differences between the 6.5 Grendel and the 6.8 SPC, like I said, 6.5 would be my first choice. 6.8 would be a very close second. I wouldn't feel bad about either one. Either one of those, I'd say, would be optimal for hunting medium to large game with your AR. The 6.5 Grendel, I will do a quick aside and say that if I was building an AR-15 dual purpose for hunting and maybe as designated marksman rifle, like I wanted it for protecting the homestead, I wanted it for protecting a large piece of property, for a designated marksman rifle, for just, you know, refining longer range shooting, but I also wanted to hunt with it in an AR-15. The 6.5 Grendel would probably be my number one choice if I was doing a crossover application of those things. So again, the 6.5 Grendel and the 6.8 SPC would be top choices for me. Now some people may be saying, or some fans that may be thinking, what about a 300 Blackout? And I would say to that, no. I would say that is not better than a 223-556. If that's what you have and you're going to hunt with it, that's your choice. Again, I would say bullet selection is vital for that. Bullet selection is key for that. Know your range for that. Know your dope for that. Know your holdover. That bullet has a pretty rainbow-like trajectory. I would not say that it's optimal. I wouldn't say you can't do it, though. I would just say, again that if you're going to hunt with a 300 blackout really bullet selection and range are limiting factors and key there so pay attention to those two factors now there are other options especially if you're hunting you know in the eastern woods or the swamps or lowlands or somewhere where range is really in close and that would be you know the 450 bushmaster the 458 socom and the 50 beowulf these are your big caliber you know, single stack in a magazine, you know, the AR stacks rounds side by side or almost side by side called the double stack. Well, these rounds are so big, they're single stack in the magazine. They're kind of tailor made to fit the biggest rounds you can in an AR magazine. 50 Beowulf obviously is 50 caliber. The 458 SOCOM and 450 Bushmaster are 45 caliber, which I think will give you a much better bullet selection. But those would be great rounds for deer and larger game at close range. We're talking, you know, 100 yards and in. If you're doing jump shots, if you're hunting in a swamp, hunting out of a canoe, you know, things like that. Those rounds are pretty cool if you want those. But you're going to be spending quite a bit of money for an upper like that and rounds like that. And I would say if you're going to spend that money probably better off just going and getting a Savage 110 
or Savage Axis in 308 or 30 all 6 at Walmart be better in almost every way and cheaper than what you're trying to do with a 450 Bushmaster. But if that's all you have or that's what you want to do, again, go for it. Get a good, uh, pretty much anyone in those calibers that's not FMJ, that's any kind of soft nose or a hollow point round ought to do just fine because I imagine they penetrate quite well. That's one of the big reasons they were designed. Big, heavy bullets at moderate velocities tend to penetrate well, so I wouldn't worry about penetration on those. I'll give an honorable mention to the 30 AR. That's a pretty cool cartridge. It was kind of a flash in the pan. It never really caught on. But I would say that would be one of the best cartridges. If you reload, finding ammo for it's going to be tricky. But if you reload, you just buy the cases from Starline or whoever makes them. Uh, and it shouldn't be that big a deal if you're a reloader anyway. The 30 Remington AR. Pretty cool cartridge. Optimized for hunting. I don't think it really ever caught on for whatever reason. But pretty good cartridge for that. Maybe they introduced it too soon before ARs were really getting popular for hunting. But it would be a great cartridge. So honorable mention to that one if you feel like reloading for it. Or if you just feel like getting a really niche cartridge that you really have to squirrel and look really hard for ammo for. But the 30 AR is also a very good cartridge. It's a 30 caliber. It would be fine for deer and some larger game. All right, with that, guys, I'm going to say thanks for listening to this episode of Gunfighter Life. If you like this podcast, you may also like the Alpha Male podcast. You may also like Simple Man Sermons if you care about the important stuff. The preachings of a simple man called by God to share the good news of Jesus Christ. No matter how successful a hunter you are, one day your days of hunting as you are now on this earth will be done. And there, and then where will you be? So if you want to check out those podcasts or if you want to contact me, please go to goodshepherdtraining.com. That's your one-stop shop. Instead of just mentioning a bunch of different stuff, go to goodshepherdtraining.com. These podcasts are free for you to listen to, and I like it that way, but not free to produce. If you want to support, if you think this content was worth a dollar or the fraction of the cost of a box of ammo, please consider going to Good Shepherd Training, scrolling to the bottom of the Patreon. And even if you don't want to support in that way, you can support by liking, subscribing to the podcast, sharing it with your friends, somebody you think would enjoy it. Granted, the audio quality of this podcast is probably not as good as some, but hopefully the real-world first-hand experience, grounded in reality, is worth it. And I hope that you agree with that. As a thank you for listening to the end, I'm going to give the tactical tip. This is something from my training and experience. By God's grace, I've never not recovered a big game animal that I was hunting. And one of the tips I'm the tip I'm going to give you today is if you get a good shot on an animal, if you even if you believe it's a good shot, if that animal is still on its legs, if you can get another shot in it. You may mess up a little bit of meat, but it greatly reduces the chance that you won't get any meat at all by a wounded animal running away and you not being able to find it. So if one bullet is good, if you can get another bullet in it ethically, another bullet is better. Put that animal down. Even if you think it's a great shot and it's going to fall soon, if you can get another good kill shot in, get one in. So that's my tactical tip of the day. With that, guys, I'm going to say thanks for listening and have a blessed day.